this month's edition of Spotlight on Edmonds Real Estate. My name is Wayne Purser. I'm a local realtor with Cobble Banker Bain Real Estate Services, downtown Edmonds, just located footsteps from the fountain. This month, my special guest is Thomas Fadden with Fairway Mortgage. We'll also have our real estate weather report, and we'll wrap up the show with comments and predictions of what's going to happen in the real estate world. Right now, I'd like to introduce my special guest, Thomas Fadden from Fairway Mortgage. Thank you, Wayne. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, So why don't you give us a little update? Uh, You were here nine months ago. Correct. And tell us what has happened in the mortgage industry. It's quite interesting uh, to see what's been happening in relation to the, uh, basically in relation to the presidency and the effects that the presidency has had on the housing market and the interest rates. Initially, when uh, Trump came into office, uh, it caused interest rates to uh, go up quite a bit. And with the expectations that the economy was going to flourish. And now that we've seen over the last nine months that the economy's not quite as rambunctious as they expected. Right. Interest rates have been risen by the uh, Federal Reserve Board, but uh, actually has caused our uh, local interest rates, our, our nationwide interest rates, to taper a little bit. So we've seen good interest rates, which has kept the housing market in check. Right. And with such uh, appreciation that's happening here in the Northwest with all the jobs in Seattle, and now more and more people are not finding residents in downtown core or Bellevue, they're starting to move out in the suburbs. Uh, How do you see applications? Are they still at current levels from a year ago? Applications are strong. Uh, Some of that is due to refinancing because interest rates have remained so low and it's helping some of the people that need to adjust their mortgages and and uh, fix them in if they've been in an arm or things like that. But uh, application rates have have been steady, but for the purchases, it's been a very challenging process to get offers accepted on homes, which has caused some people to to step back and say, I'm I'm not so sure I want to get into this game. Right. And what I'm seeing in in people out of my office is uh, we're we're seeing homeowners that they have to sell a home before uh, they can purchase something. Do you see more people getting bridge loans? Is that starting to happen more? No, actually what I'm seeing more of is uh, some people actually, uh, agents as you know are, are are skeptical or hesitant to offer contingent, meaning right. the offer being accepted with the sale of their home contingent. And we're, I've actually see, I've been in, in contract with a few customers that have had contingent offers accepted. So I'm seeing that a little bit in the market where that, that uh, agents are being brave and, and offering contingent and getting those accepted. Right. And in my past experience and what I've seen is on a contingent offer, the buyer is usually paying a little bit of a premium Correct. for the, the seller to accept their contingency because they're going to have to wait. So. Puts them in a more vulnerable position for sure. Right, right. So um, here in Edmonds, a uh, lot of people that have owned their house for a long time and uh, so people wanting to, uh, looking at maybe relocating because they want to be snowbirds. Uh, any advice or recommendations if they wanted to buy something somewhere else? Uh, it's just, it's a great time to sell, that's for sure. So I think that uh, anybody thinking about uh, buying abroad or buying in other areas, um, a lot of the people that you're referring to uh, hopefully have more equity in their homes, maybe the ability to take some of that equity out to buy that home abroad and then sell their house. Uh, similar to a bridge loan, like you mentioned earlier. Um, that, But I am seeing a lot of that as well, where people are looking at downsizing and a big house is not necessarily as important to them as it used to be. Right, right. So as, as we wrap up here, um, what are the three key things that a, a buyer or maybe someone who has an existing home, they need to sell, but they need to apply for a mortgage for the next home? What are the three things they should start preparing? I think that the most important thing, and has nothing to do with my role in the process, but the most important thing is to get in touch with the lender like myself to get things dialed in before they even think about making the next ne- next move. That's that's the one most important thing. And then getting in touch with a person like yourself, the real estate agent, to, right. to, cre- to create a game plan. You know, I, I talk to so many people that come to me and say, we're thinking about doing something in the next three to four months. And as you know, we meet with them within a day or two. They're like, okay, let's go do something right now. Or they start looking at houses and go, well, we're not quite ready. But And then they see a couple of houses. Oh, Wayne, can we write an offer today? So I, I can't stress how important it is to prepare, get together with a person like myself to, to get their financing in order, 
get together with a person like yourself to create a game plan and then talk about strategies to uh, to sell their current house and, and the timing of that and whether they have to go contingent or whether they're prepared to put their house on the market, take the leap. That's right. Yeah, in today's market, the buyers need to be prepared. Uh, and that's uh, doing two things right off, as you mentioned, number two for you, and number one is contacting me as a real estate professional Correct. to help them with their uh, home finding and their selection and what they're going to do. Correct. And then connecting with you. Um, all right. And the last thing is what the most exciting thing is as a lender is the day of funding. What tends to happen there? Well, we fund the loan and then you get to hand over the keys. Yeah. That's fun to watch people's face light up uh, for home ownership. Yeah, that's the most exciting place. I, sometimes customers call me and go, okay, the loan fund, what, what happens now? I say, well, I know that you've already talked to Wayne. He's going to hand you off the keys, so that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. All right, so how can our viewers contact you? They can reach me on my cell phone, uh, which is pretty much an overall phone for me, and that's 206-940-2212, and I'm always available on that line. Okay, email? Email is Thomas F, as in Fadden, at Fairway MC, as in MichaelCharlie.com. All right. Well, thank you very much for being my special guest today. Thanks for having me, Wayne. I really enjoyed it. Great. This wraps up special guest portion of the show. Now we'll move on to Spotlight and Edmonds Real Estate Weather Report. Welcome back to Spotlight and Edmonds Real Estate Weather Report. We'll start off in Edmonds, zip code 020. We have currently 43 listings, and we have 42 solds for the month of July. The weather temperature is 98, and days on market, about 18. Rates are flat right now. They have been for the last couple months. And as we move on to Edmonds, 026, 82 current listings, 91 sales, temperature of 100 degrees with 11 days on the market. As we move to South Snohomish County, Muckleteal, Briar, Linwood, Mount Lake Terrace, and Mill Creek, 284 current listings, 319 sales, 100 degree temperature, and 12 days on the market. North King County would be Shoreline, 61 current listings, 53 sales, 92 degree weather temperature, and 10 days on the market. I've had viewers ask me via email, uh, what is the difference between the weather temperature and days on the market? Well, the temperature is a ratio between current listings and sales. So if there's more sales than listings, of course, we're at 100 degrees and more. Uh, days on the market uh, depends on how a home, some homes are overpriced, and they stay on the market for months, which skews the days on the market. But again, if your home is priced correctly, it will sell in 7 to 14 days. As for year-to-date, 2016 compared to 2017, uh, earlier this year I predicted that we would have about a 10% less sales for the year. We have actually caught up to 2016 sales. We were behind in March, but we've actually caught up and we're dead even. Um, also, the Snohomish County average price in the last year has gone up 10%. So appreciation is still happening. That wraps up this part of Spotlight and Edmonds Real Estate Weather Report. I'll be back with my closing comments. Welcome back to Spotlight and Edmonds Real Estate Show. Today's closing comments are, in today's highly competitive market where inventory levels are not keeping up with buyer demand, I'll have three steps of what to do in preparing yourself to be successful in this real estate market. Number one, be prepared. Home buyers should talk to a lender, real estate professional, and a home inspector before they think about making an offer on a home. Number two, think strategically. Starter home buyers don't have a home to sell and can be flexible on closing dates compared to home buyers that have to sell a home. Number three, seek out the ugly ducklings. Buyers may consider looking for homes that have been on the market for a while and investigate why. The reasons may be a deal killer, but all it takes is one ugly duckling to turn into a swan. In today's market, full of bidding wars and tough competition, finding ways to stand out from the rest by getting creative will improve your chances to have a home that you can call your own. 
If you have any real estate questions, please contact me at 206-235-2693, or you can reach me by email, waynepurser at cbbain.com. And by the way, I'm never too busy for your referrals. So that wraps up this month's edition of Spotlight Edmonds Real Estate TV show. We look forward to seeing you next month.